Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Blake here and I'm back with another YouTube video and this one is also music related, but it's a little bit different. I'm gonna do a vlog today. And in this episode, I'm gonna go over a musical myth about making a music career for yourself and specifically around the kind of part insult, part joke is often thrown at performers, which is to not give up your day job. So I'm gonna chat about some misconceptions in terms of the massive chasm between kind of the sort of struggling artist that people don't know and then Ed Sheeran on the other end of the scale and everything that's in between that. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts. So what are your thoughts on building a musical career? If you are a musician, how do you do it? Do you do other things outside your music? Do you not do other things outside your music? If you do do music, do you do things within that to have different revenue streams? Let me know and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So previously I have worked as a full-time musician for a while and there were things about it I really enjoyed and things I really did not like. And I made a video a little while back now and it was about the five pros and cons of being a full-time musician against a part-time musician and what that meant for me personally. So I hope you'd agree that for the non-hardcore music fan, most of the kind of general public's sort of exposure to music will be of one of the two extremes. In other words, it will be the people that they hear on national and international radio stations, see on TV shows and all that, you're kind of Ed Sheeran's of the world. Or on the other end of that, it will be people that they kind of run into in their day-to-day -day lives. So buskers, for instance, playing on the town square. And there's obviously a kind of misconception that's been made with this idea of someone being a struggling artist, i.e. if they're giving up their kind of job and their kind of livelihood outside of music, then that's gonna be a really hard existence, so they're gonna be a struggling artist. And then somewhere from that, there's a chasm jump to where they are a world superstar, a renowned pop star, rock star, whatever, known all over the world. And obviously it makes sense that there's actually a massive spectrum of people between those two extremes making reasonable kind of livings out of doing music and doing so in a number of different ways. So for the musicians out there, I don't know if you agree with this, but one problem that's caused for me personally is it becomes really difficult to frame success because if I have things go well, like people stream my music or really enjoy a gig I play or really interact with some kind of music content that I make, like what you're watching right now, then it might be good, but how do I determine what good is when there's kind of global superstars out there? And obviously the kind of benefit and drawback of social media is that we have access to the entire world at once, including all of the famous musicians, for instance. So framing your own kind of music and where it's going and the success of that is a really difficult thing to do. And this can lead to you feeling bad and sort of not appreciating your achievements. And really you should be feeling good about the progress you're making. But also there's an issue in that link to this idea of not giving up the day job. It's kind of suggested that in order to have music as a day job, the amount of innate talent you have is completely critical. Now, of course, don't get me misunderstood here. I'm not saying anyone's not talented. Some of the very well-known musicians will be really talented, but there's a few problems here. The first is that talent is not an innate characteristic. So someone could be kind of naturally more musical. They could kind of pick things up by ear a bit easier. They could be good at songwriting when they start out. But nevertheless, every musician you know, including the really famous ones, have had to work on their kind of understanding of music, their understanding of their instrument, maybe their performance, stage presence, maybe their promotion, maybe they've had to work on recording their own material, all that sort of stuff. And what you consider their talent, essentially what you're seeing from a, let's say 30 second performance of them, is the culmination of months or years probably worth of practice and dedication and performance. So the first thing to say is that talent is kind of not really real in the sense that it doesn't come just as soon as someone decides they're gonna be a musician. The second problem is that talent definitely does not equal success. Now don't get me wrong, there are lots of famous musicians out there who are fantastically talented. Even from a subjective standpoint, you could watch them play or sing or anything and say they are really talented. Obviously, consider what I've just said before that. But nevertheless, you can watch them and say, this is an incredible performance, or they are a fantastic songwriter, or similar. 
However, what I'd also say is that a load of things have kind of happened in such a way that they have become well known to a lot of people. Talent might come into the kind of equation of being heard on the radio or being kind of put in front of listeners but there's a lot of gatekeepers and there's a lot of things that have to be considered in order for someone's music to be kind of widespread and wide known. It could depend on what kind of music it is. Is it commercial? What does the person look like? Do they, as Louis Walsh once said, look like a pop star? What do they sound like? Does it sound like it was popular at the minute or nothing like it? Or does it sound so much like it that they don't have enough kind of uniqueness to carve out a sort of fan base as well? And then there's loads of other things that come into it in terms of opportunities that come up and how that kind of exposure comes about. I'm basically just saying this because it's too much of a simplification. So I've seen many local and independent artists play and some of them are absolutely amazing in terms of the quality of performance and songwriting that they achieve. And not only that, and I'm sure this might be the case for you as well, I've seen some professional musicians play that were unbelievable and I've also seen a few kind of shows in the past where I was kind of not entirely blown away by it. So I don't think talent directly links to the success or sort of commercial viability that somebody has in a music career. So of course this is made worse by the fact that music's biggest strength is also one of its biggest weaknesses which is that it's completely subjective. So therefore trying to be a musician is really hard because how do you set kind of career goals or kind of achievable paths for the next year, two years, five years or whatever. There's not really like a blueprint like there would be in other fields where it's very obvious how you get from one point to other points and further career progression. And this isn't helped by the sweeping generalizations like these that could be made, especially by people that are essentially gatekeepers in music. So an example being Chris Moyles, who recently on his radio show essentially said that all unsigned and independent acts and bands are terrible and therefore most of the music they send in is awful and that's why it's not worth considering for his radio show. There's a few things that are problematic about this of course. The first is he's a gatekeeper so although obviously the record companies pay the radio stations to play certain people and they very much encourage them to play signed artists, nevertheless he is one of the people who decides what is played. And there's also the issue that without kind of the independent and unsigned artists coming through and developing and getting those opportunities, the next kind of generation of signed artists aren't there. So he's saying no essentially to potentially the next load of musicians, some of which might be successful, and might be played on his station and others. And just to contrast this recently and show that journey that at the moment anyway is still possible, albeit in a very non-obvious fashion and in a way where you have to build your own music career. In his recent legend slot, Cat Stevens played Glastonbury, you might have seen it, and as part of his performance he spoke about his first ever gig in a very tiny bar in Soho and how that has been an incredible journey from going from that to playing on the pyramid stage at Glastonbury. And it's those massive differences that we see from the very beginnings and the very ends, if you like, or at least the very peaks of a career and not the kind of amount of struggle and work in the middle and what people have to do to make being a musician financially viable and kind of viable as a career as well. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of independent musicians that most people won't have heard of, me included, that do music full time and by that I usually mean do gigs every week, several times a week and usually probably you know playing weddings, playing cover songs, that sort of thing and that's definitely a feasible way to do it. I guess the thing to think about is what is your aim when you want to do music full time? What does that look like for you as a musician? When I did it myself I really did enjoy the gigs but what I found was first of all I was kind of always on the hunt for gigs and opportunities because I needed it basically as a career, as money. I needed money to pay my bills but also an important thing for me was I didn't get the artistic freedom that I wanted so because I was constantly worried about making it work what I got going on in my day-to-day -day life and kind of remaining financially viable I wasn't thinking how do I get my next song recorded or what next social media post do I do or how do I promote this upcoming you know set of things I've got as a musician the main reason being is that there has to be a clear link between the music thing you're doing and 
essentially the money you'll get from it to pay your bills. And I think that's where this kind of idea of the struggling artist comes from, which is that you might not be struggling as an artist if you're kind of playing gigs a few times a week, but if you're trying to kind of promote your original music and you're not well known and you know, you've got to grow a fan base and you're going from quite small beginnings, for instance, without a lot of kind of money and resource, it's really difficult to do that. And to also do that at the same time as kind of maintaining your own kind of health and happiness and money and everything else is, is quite a difficult and challenging things to do. And actually, in a way, keeping your day job can be a good option because what it basically means is you free up all the time outside of your working hours for purely artistic musical stuff. You can spend more time on recording, you can spend more time on doing music projects which you look into for entirely just the fun of doing it rather than the money that comes from it. And basically you don't have to stress, you know that you're getting paid each month or each week, whatever it is. You know that you're going to have that time each week to put into your music craft. Obviously the downside of it is you don't have the free time, so it's kind of balancing up free time versus motivation and kind of drive to succeed. And it's really difficult trying to achieve a music dream, but we all love doing it. Whereas if you do your music job full time, then essentially doing the artistic points of the job, you know, doing the things which might promote you as a musician, but won't make you money, at least not in the short term, like recording and releasing music for instance, then you've got to kind of do this as your essentially overtime, right, when you're not doing your paid gigs. There is an in-between, so a lot of musicians going forward, and especially over the last few years, speak a lot about multiple revenue streams. In other words, making money from different music related things which aren't only gigging, which is quite a good way of doing it because it means you've got a lot more flexibility. So for instance, selling merchandise, or for instance, making money from social media, YouTube, that kind of thing, advertising, making money from kind of streaming. A lot of people do live streaming now, me included, because it's a great way to not only reach out to people you wouldn't meet otherwise, but also potentially make a little bit of money from it as well, or a lot, depending on how big your following is. So there are different things you can do. Other things people do include things like giving guitar lessons or singing lessons, because you know you already know how to do that if you're a performing musician and passing that knowledge on is something people will pay for. So there's the option to do multiple revenue streams as well, and I think that's a good option, and it means you're not entirely relying on gigs, which is fine, but obviously if you get ill, or you can't do any of the gigs, or anything falls through like that, then you're in a potentially sticky situation. So not only that, but if you work a non-musical job, then I guess the chances are you're probably on a salary, you know, roughly what you'll get roughly every week or every month or whatever, which also means you can kind of decide a budget to put towards your musical kind of endeavors. So you know each month exactly how much money you'll make from your non-music job and how much you can then put into recording your own music if you need to, if that costs you anything, getting equipment, buying instruments, you know, promoting it, all that sort of stuff. So it can be good from a financial perspective as well. So thank you very much for watching, that was a short vlog on the kind of musical myth that is not giving up the day job and why that is first of all wrong and also why it might not even be good advice depending on the person. What did you think about it? If you have any ideas, let me know. What do you think about the idea in general of whether someone is talented or not and how that relates to the money they may or may not make from music or a musical career? Do let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video or you like music related content in general, then please consider clicking the subscribe and notification bell buttons. I try and do videos as much as I can, roughly once a week. And I not only do vlogs like this, I make music, I do my own music, I do covers, I do things like gag reels, I promote local musicians and independent musicians as well. I do loads and loads of different stuff and I'm always looking for new ideas and new videos to make. So if you're into any of that, please consider clicking the subscribe and notification bell buttons. Then you'll get notified as soon as I release new videos. Thanks very much, take care of yourself, and see you next time. The world, rising sea.